Hey guys, one of my Patreon members asked me to model a tactical helmet, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. This model will be split into multiple videos, because there are some very hard parts that deserve their own videos. Join my Discord server if you need some help on your project, we are more than 1300. You can also join my Patreon for more exclusive content. I made a mentorship program to help you to break into the 3D industry, so if you're interested in taking your 3D journey one step further, feel free to send me a private message on Discord to talk about it. And before we dive in, let me introduce you the sponsor of this video, which is called JLCPCB. JLC PCB is a company that offers online 3D printing and CNC machining services. They provide a lot of different 3D printing technologies, such as stereolithography, multi-jet fusion, selective laser melting, fused deposition modeling, and selective laser sintering. You can choose between a range of high quality materials, such as nylon, plastic, fully transparent resin, and even metal. You can also print your models in full color, which is a unique feature. The quality of the 3D printed models is very good. You just have to create an account on the website, upload your file, and you can choose between four formats, such as STL, STP, STEP and OBJ. Most orders can be completed within 48 to 72 hours and can be delivered in three days worldwide. And every new user can get a $60 free coupon to spend on the website. If 3D printing is something you're interested in, you can click on the link in the description to get your coupon. Let's add a cube. Press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier with two levels. In edit mode, select all the polygons, press Alt Shift S to spherify and drag your mouse all the way to the right. Add a subdivision surface modifier, right click, shade smooth. Remove the lower half of the sphere and align the vertices with the picture. Do it with the subdivision surface modifier enabled. Press O to activate proportional editing or click on this button and set it to sphere. Add a mirror modifier. You can use the 3D cursor as the pivot point to scale the helmet from the back. To do that, select a vertex, then press Shift S and choose cursor to selected. Set the pivot point to 3D cursor. Repeat these steps until all the vertices match the picture. Select the bottom edge loop, extrude it downward, align the vertices with the picture. My two reference pictures don't match perfectly, but it doesn't really matter. Press GG to slide the vertices along the edges. Duplicate the helmet and hide it. It will be used later as a guide mesh with a perfect curvature. Select all the faces, press I to inset. Slide the vertices along the edges by pressing GG. And apply the subdivision surface modifier with one level to get more geometry to work with. Select the duplicated helmet and apply a high number of subdivision. Then select the low poly helmet, add a shrink wrap modifier, set the high poly helmet as the target, apply it. That way the low poly one matches the curvature of the high poly one. You can hide the high poly mesh. Press K to select the knife tool, then add some cuts to match the picture.
Press J to connect the vertices. Press GG to slide the vertices along the edges to space the edges out. Let's clean the topology. Select this edge, remove it. Select this vertex, press GG. And select all the edges. Right click, subdivide. It's a nice way to add an edge loop where it would not be possible to add it with Ctrl R because of the edge flow. Select this edge, right click, subdivide. Press J to connect the vertices. Space the edges out until you get a rather uniform polygon size. Remove this edge, add an edge loop with Ctrl R to turn the triangle into a diamond polygon, connect the vertices. Select these edges, right click, loop tools, space, that way all the edges have the same length. Now I'm going to add a seam to be able to quickly select this bumpy detail on the side of the helmet. Press L to select everything at once, go to front view and move the polygons to the right. Press Ctrl minus on the numpad to shrink the selection and repeat this process until you get the right shape. Add a subdivision surface modifier to check if the surface looks clean. Add a mirror modifier. If you think that the shape needs to be adjusted, select the edges and press GG, and you can use the set flow add-on to bring back the curvature. Set flow is a free add-on, I use it all the time in my projects, the link is in the description. going to remove this edge loop. Don't forget to press M and merge the vertices by distance. Then add a mirror modifier. As you can see, there is a bumpy area on the side. Select this vertex and with the subdivision surface modifier turned on, press Alt S to push it along its normal until the surface gets perfectly smooth. Let's repeat that for the four poles at the top of the helmet. Select one pole, press Shift G to open the Select Similar menu, then select Amount of Connecting Edges. Deselect the vertices at the bottom. Set the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Then press S 
0.9946, press Ctrl numpad plus, then S.9983. The surface should be almost perfectly smooth and the poles should be barely visible even with a shiny matte cap. You can press Alt S to push the vertices along the normals to smooth the surface even more. Raise this edge loop a little bit by pressing GG. In object mode, add a solidify modifier and apply it. Select this ring of polygons and extrude them along the normals. Select the sharp edges. Add a bevel, press P and set the shape to 1. Press C to clamp the overlapping. Don't forget to press M and merge the vertices by distance. If some vertices are not merged, remove the edges. Add a support loop over here, and we have the base shape of the helmet. In the next video, I will focus on this part. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please leave a like and a comment. Thank you for watching. Take care.